Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK onto your screens, onto your phones and welcome. Thank you for passing by. Um, I know we've heard a lot about um, the stepping down of the royals, but today I wanted to focus on Meghan Markle. Purely because I can imagine how lonely, isolated and vulnerable she feels. She might be putting on a smile, but I can imagine what she is going through. She's been more or less cyberbullied and banished. That's really, that's really what it is. Because as much as Harry would like to have her back, there is nothing he can do. Stepping down means they've also lost that protection. So they're open to fire. They're open fire. Anybody can shoot daggers to them, whichever they, way they want. So I wanted to talk about what it must be like to be a mixed race person. I'm not mixed race, but those who are mixed race are subjected even today to the one drop rule. The one drop rule is you can be grandparents back, but even if your third grandparent had some black blood in them, you would be considered black. So that seems to have resurfaced because Meghan has married into royalty. And you know what pees me off? Pretty Patel is saying, oh, she hasn't heard anything racist about Meghan Markle. Where has she been? Where has she been from the time they had the baby? Not, not even mentioning before that and publishing it up as a monkey, as a little gorilla that the two of them are holding. If that's not racist, I don't know what is. Eamon Holmes calling her uppity. If you don't know what uppity is, the, you know, back in the day that is referred to Negroes who feel as though they who get a bit above their station. And she's got the audacity to say she hasn't heard anything racist targeted at Meghan Markle. I'm going to let you know what they've said about her. Um, <clears throat> Marnie wrote messages to her friend complaining that Markle, an American actress of mixed race, who is due to marry Harry in May, would taint the royal blood with her seed. Then she continues, next will be a Muslim prime minister and a black king. You know, is it really necessary? So when we had black kings way, way back, do you think we were sending out texts to say, oh, you know, next thing we're going to know, we're going to have a white prime minister and a white queen? No, we didn't. So what's the problem? In November 2017, an interview with BBC's Michelle Hussein that was streamed live on Periscope, which is integrated within Twitter, um, to started talking, they had comments come up about jungle fever, gold digger, biracial commoner, whitest black girl, and that she's unsuitable. Is it really necessary? And they can't even be polite about it. And then you know what um, they're say, also saying? Oh, because anything you say about Meghan Markle is construed as racist. The thing is, is that if they were doing that to every, her predecessors, when I mean her predecessors, every fiancé that married into the royal family, we wouldn't have a gripe. But why is it only her that's getting all this negative feedback? Why is she considered the gold digger? That is the, that is the issue. Um, Prince Harry apparently condemned the racist coverage of the couple back in 2016 in a statement on his behalf, which read, his girlfriend Meghan Markle has been subject to a wave of abuse and harassment. Some of this has been very public. The smear on the front page of a national newspaper the racial undertones of common pieces and the outright racist and sexism of social media trolls and web articles. But you know, nobody, nobody cares. They didn't even care when he was a prince. 
So why are they going to care now? I mean, um, what else? Okay, calling her rich and exotic. You can't really say that is racist, although, you know, they have this thing about black people being exotic. Um, then, they, then they say Meghan Markle went from cotton slaves to royalty. Now, why do they have to bring that up? And then they have the nerve to say, oh, we're everything that we, we, they say is construed as racist. You know, it's these little innuendos. It's cyberbullying. It's, um, what do they call that? Um, covert messaging. It's like, you're not actually really saying what you mean. It's, un it's undercurrents all the time, these clever undercurrents. And, you know, it's because the British are so clever with their words. And sometimes they get caught out and they can kind of say, oh, well, it's not, we didn't really mean it that way. You're too sensitive. We meant it this way. And there's, with the English language, it's got so many meanings anyway. But yeah, people who are not on the ball can let it bypass and think, oh, yeah, those black people, they're so sensitive. They take everything so seriously. Because that's what we're always accused of doing always accused of taking things too seriously. We've got a chip on our shoulder. So when people make all these subtle innuendos and, you know, but it is, it's bullying and it's not even subtle bullying and it should not be allowed. It should not be allowed. She shouldn't have to escape to get away from all of this. And she'd have to stay away from every kind of TV and newspaper, not to be inundated with everything that they're trying to find out about her. Anyway, um, what else was there? Yeah, like I said, a lot of the um, discussions about her blackness are the nudge, nudge, wink, wink type, as if to say, you know, you know, we, we know, you know, we're not going to say anything just in case, but, you know, we know the innuendos. Um, and apparently they said that um, the Twitter abuse isn't even much. It's only 20 accounts that are guilty of um, driving abusive remarks to Meghan Markle. But the point is those 20 tweets, the media get hold of it and they're no longer 20 tweets. It goes out into the newspapers, it goes out onto TV, it goes out into the world, it goes out globally. So those 20 tweets are not just 20 tweets. Anything you do on social media now is not confined to that little circle that it's sent out in. It just goes viral. So I don't know why they're minimising it by saying, oh, it's only 20 tweets. They don't know what all the fuss is about. Then they, um, somebody said, Markle abandoned her own family. Now she's forced Harry to abandon his. I don't know who said that. It's a female. Good riddance to her. Leave our royal family alone. I think it's absolutely in 2020 to have that mentality. What planet are they on? What planet are they living in? Where have they been living all these years? It makes you wonder, how do they live? How do they engage? I guess they don't know any black people at all. Why have that mentality? To be honest, if, if um, she looked like Zosa Bina, you know, um, as beautiful as she is, Miss Universe, or Whoopi Goldberg, then I think... Well, you know, they are going to be a bit worried because she is a bit dark. But she's so fair. And if the, when, when um, Archie grows up, he's hardly going to have any colour at all. So what is their issue? Apparently, Hell Berry had the same issue because they were saying they wanted to call her child black, even though it was so far, far removed, the blackness in her, but they still wanted to call her daughter black. And Hellberry didn't have an issue with that, and nor did the daughter, but the fact of the matter is they made such a big deal about it. 
you know, these mixed race people, you know, they're having such a hard time. It's not even confined to them. And the thing is, is that they can't, it's not even like they can be divided and say, okay, I'm going to have 50% white and 50% black. No, they relegate them themselves. It's almost like they choose the identity for biracial, um, the biracial generation. They decide that they are going to be allocated to the to the Negro sector. So whether they like, will like it or not, that is where they're relegated to. And as much as Tiger Woods wants to be called a Cablin Asian, sorry, love, you're black. According to America, according to Britain and everywhere else, you're black. So you can't hide behind these convoluted titles. Um, what else did I want to say? Apparently they've been harassing her mother. And you know that's the reason her father didn't come to the wedding, because the reporters hounded him, knocked on his door all hours of the night. You know, really, really harassed him. That's why he chose not to come, but they don't tell you that. They're now doing the same to her mother. She has to fight the paparazzi to get into her front door. They shouldn't have to go through that. I think it's absolutely disgusting. It's almost like they're being punished for making that step. And in fact, that is what they're being. They're being punished. How dare you? How dare your daughter marry into royalty? How dare she try to get close to blue blood? Blue blood, my butt. We've all got red blood. There's no such thing as blue blood. Cut any one of us from the queen down to the beggar in the street. We, if you cut us, we all red blood runs. So I don't even know where they're going with the bottom of blue blood. I'll tell you something, it's so, it's so disappointing. Yeah, apparently she wore a pair of jeans to an event. You know what they started writing in the newspaper? We can see who's got the trousers. Why don't they write that about everybody else? Who wears trousers? All the fashion models, all the wives. From what's her name? Um, uh, Victoria Beckham, upwards. Why don't you know? Why don't they say she wears the trousers in the relationship? But oh no! And then they say, oh, we're not having a dig. We're just making comments. Then Jermaine Greer, she's saying, oh, the same way she bolted from her first husband, she's going to bolt from Prince Harry. The only reason she had bolt, if anything, is because they've driven her to it. That's to be the only reason. But you know what? As a black woman, I'm praying that she stands strong. I'm praying that they don't break her down because that is what they're trying to do. They're trying to break her down. And then they'll, then they'll blame, you know, something. They blame, they blame it on, you know, oh, you know, she couldn't cope and this and that. They're using psychology on her and she's alone. She is so alone with all of this. Well, she's not really alone because when you think about it, black people, we have been suffering this. So she's not alone. We're all in it. Um... Alex um, sent me something, Alex Uja, and he was, um, let me see, he was kind of comparing what the similarities of what she goes through and what we go through. Um, well, he was saying that Meghan Markle stands testament that all minorities and people of colour regardless of intellect, skills, education and experience, are still seen as inferior and unacceptable. It's such a shame. What a beautiful woman. I mean, I know I'm talking to her like in the past tense, but I've just got this eerie, eerie feeling. Um... Her race is constant, is continually a subject for ridicule and denigration in the public commons. Her every good intention is being misconstrued, rubbished and trashed without being able to respond to defend herself, her ideals or her beliefs. Just because of her position as a royal, she can't even retaliate. She's been psychologically handcuffed. 
haunted. I can't imagine that Harry could have ever imagined this, but maybe he did. Maybe he knew. He's clued up. He does know. So, but it's whether or not he's strong enough. I I think so. I think the two of them together are strong enough. Um. So hatred, racism and unkindness is entrenched within the UK. Two people got together, one black, one white, fell in love and got married. One of them is royal, the other is not, but they're consenting adults. The state of affairs stands as a mirror reflecting the reality of the UK to minorities of every kind and most especially people of colour. Every time you have been passed over for a promotion, been turned down for a job, have your ideas appropriated, been marginalised at university, stopped by a policeman in the street for driving your own car, fear to leave your house, have a security guard follow you around the shops, witness the person in the lift clutch their purse when you get in, have been racially, racially abused on tr public transport and so on and so forth. All of it is packaged up and reflected back to you in this sorry state of affairs. Meghan Markle is a martyr for all of us. To ignore this state of affairs is to ignore oneself. It ignores how we're hurting. And when we see people throwing darts at Meghan, we have to feel it. The UK is not the only place to live. Take an audit, look at your skills and then look at what the world has to offer, especially the rising regions of the world. Most of them are crying out for the skills you have gained in the UK. Don't wait for the crumbs. Get even and get a life where your skills and, your, and you as a person and your family will be valued and can contribute to the progress of the nation and humankind at large. Meghan and Harry have gone to Canada. Is that far enough? I hope so. And um, also, <clears throat> Alex Uja, he, he would like to remind readers of a comment from the past, which seems appropriate, even though he says some may disagree. First, they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, but I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Maybe it's time we all spoke out. So yeah, um, I think, yeah, I did mention the one drop rule um, with Hale Berry. Her mother was white, her father was black. And the one drop rules refers to Jim Crow's laws passed in the South during the 20th century to further disenfranchise African American. It varies from state to state, but generally, if a person has one drop of black blood, they're forbidden to pass as white. Racial identity seems to be what the world decides. They award racial identity. Footballers and other famous celebrities are British until they've done a crime. Then all of a sudden they're black. America's traditional racial hierarchy, which assigns the highest status to whites, followed by Asians with Latinos and blacks at the bottom. Mentality, still the same today, assigning minority status to mixed race individuals appears to live on in our modern day perception and categorization of people like Barack Obama, Tiger Woods, Hale Berry and now Meghan Markle according to research by the Harvard University Anderson Fund. That's where that was taken from. Um, biracials are not viewed as equal members of both parents, but as belonging more to their minority parent group. In the United States, the one drop rule, also known as the hypo descendant, dates to the 1662 Virginia law on the treatment of mixed race individuals. The legal notion of hyperdescendant has been upheld as recently as 1985, when a Louisiana court ruled that a woman with a black great, 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 great grandmother could not identify herself as white. That's great, 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 great grandmother 
could not identify herself as white on her passport. How the hell did they find that out? How the hell did they even know that her grandmother way, 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 way back was black? Facial recognition using face morphing technology that presented a series of faces ranging from 5% white to 95% white. They also found that individuals who were 50-50 mix of the two races, either black white or Asian white, were almost never identified by the study participants as white. Furthermore, on average, black white biracials had to be 68% white before they were perceived as white. The comparable figure for Asian white biracials was 63%. And like I said, that research was supported by the Harvard University Anderson Fund. So, you know, um, I just wanted us to really take on board Megan as a woman, as a mother, as a wife, as a sibling as a daughter she's a human being and she doesn't deserve what's going on and i just wanted to raise it to your awareness and i hope i've done that bye bye where is my mouse <laughs>